Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Brook with Tom Fitzenmeyer of Summit Commodity Brokerage. And we are seeing mixed to higher trade over in the livestock grains, mostly lower except for a few of the wheat contracts. But Tom, let's talk about the wheat market. We had three updates. We were putting in some Black Sea War premium, it looked like. We're looking a little tired. Do you think that we've got most of that war premium priced in? Yeah, when the missile, when those missiles flew over the weekend, it, it made everybody, and it, it's particularly in the wheat market, nervous about the potential interruption of wheat flow out of the uh, Black Sea region. And now, as, as time's going on, we, we, it kind of looks like that's not going to be affected. So the trade has acted acted accordingly and pulled some of that risk premium out. I don't think they pulled it all out. I think they're going to still maintain some because there's a lot of unknowns uh, going forward about that you know that that war our participation in it or lack thereof and, and just a lot of unknowns that i think you're going to keep some risk premium in the wheat market uh, having said that you know i don't i don't know that the upside from this from these levels is all that great and and probably you aren't going to go much under that 520 to five and a quarter area on the downside and tom when you look at the dollar um we're up against resistance but we have had such a big rally in the dollar that's really a headwind too isn't it for these greens oh for sure i mean you you, t you take the dollar from 100 uh, we were banging against 107 or close to that again here at the end of the week so you start taking that out and that is negative for all the exports of all of our commodities so that's something really to watch and then and then you got the real, the Brazilian real, making a new low at the same time, which which compounds the problem. So, yeah, that strength in the dollar, if it continues, is going to be a problem. So let's talk about the soybean market. Uh, we have retraced all of what we put on earlier in the week. So let's talk about that. Is it just because of the big Brazilian crop? We've seen some more estimates that have been coming out here that have up that crop size. Well, we, I, soybeans got caught up a little bit in that that rally in the grain markets on Monday, which did, it had no relation to what beans are, what's going to happen with beans. But you're right. I mean, this this South American crop is shaping out to be huge. They've got the weather looks quite good going into uh, the the middle to end of December. Um, the the Argentine uh, planting is about double what it was a year ago which means they're going to have crop available sooner than we thought on the corn side, that is. Um, and, and so I would expect that their bean planting is going to progress well, too. So, I mean, and and then you've got this difficulty between the U.S. and China. China yeah. doesn't want to buy any, any, buy any of our beans past January 20th for shipment and pricing beyond that time because they don't know what our policies are going to be on tariffs and what, what they're actually going to be paying for those soybeans. And, and, and they're seeing a big Brazilian crop coming. So, uh, and those beans are going to be cheaper than ours, especially with the rally in the dollar and the drop in the Brazilian real. So, uh, you know, uh, exports have been quite good in soybeans, but that's going to go away pretty rapidly here, I think. Yeah. And we had some flash sales this morning, even to China in terms of soybeans, but it's failed to move the market, which is always kind of scary. The other problem is, is that the product values have been uh, kind of going lower too, especially bean oil, right? That's been a drag. Well, okay. bean oil had been holding us up and that start, that's f fallen apart for a couple of reasons. One's palm oil's made new lows and the strength in palm oil has been holding up U.S. soybean oil. And then you got this uncertainty with EPA over what their policies are going to be toward uh, biodiesel and all that for so that hasn't helped on the bean oil side. On the meal side, meals just made new contra contract lows here in the last few days. So yeah, that so the products aren't helping support the soybean market either. So you know, there's a lot of negatives for that for so for soybeans, and it's just going to be hard to maintain rallies. Right, and you mentioned the tariff concerns that we have that China has here. But we also have China and Brazil striking a deal today on trade or exports. And so that's not really positive either, is it? No, I mean, they've been listing toward 
toward Brazil for quite a long time. They invested a lot of money in their ports and their facilities down there. So, I, I mean, a trade agreement there is, I mean, who's surprised by that? That's just a, a mega trend that's been going on for a while and is probably going to continue to go on. I, I, I mean, the soybean business is slipping to South America and has been for several years here now. And it's just a, a mega trend that's probably going to continue. But Tom, it's going to continue. Time. Yeah, it's kind of a political statement, though, really against the U.S. that they do not want to have to rely on us for really anything, right? Right. Absolutely, it is. I, and I mean, on the corn side, they've got plenty of corn. South America is going to have more corn for them. Uh, so I, I don't see them buying any U.S. corn for quite a long period of time. So, you know, the, we're, things aren't going great for us in, China, in so soybeans or in corn in terms of Chinese demand. Absolutely. Um, also, uh, the corn market continues to have very strong demand. We've got strong cash basis levels and the bull spreads, but yet that market can't get over resistance. So what's the problem? What is the problem? Well, we have had basis improvement, which has been good. Now, is that coming because people think that that we don't have the supply, that the USDA is going to cut yield again in the in January. They don't they don't change yield and production in their December report, but th there could be a change in January. Uh, is demand been better than we expect? Uh, maybe exports have been been pretty good, particularly from Mexico. But again, is that front loaded because of fear of uh, tariffs or whatever dust up we might have between us and the Mexican government when the new administration comes in. Um, uh, ethanol production has been quite strong, so that's been helpful. So, uh, and then the third alternative, I guess, is that the farmers have locked their, their crop up and they're not going to sell much until after the first of the year until uh, number one, because they don't like the prices. And well, that's number one and number two. That's, I mean, that's the primary reason. And they think it, there's a chance it can be better after the first of the year. So all that combines is going to support the corn price. On the other hand, there's a lot of corn in the world. There's no shortage anywhere. South American weather for corn production is going to looks is shaping up to be quite good. So, uh, you know, here we are, we're stuck in a, you know, $4 to four thirty, four forty range. And they're probably going to chop around in there for quite a, quite a while, I think. Yeah, and it was scary to me last week to see the funds add so much to their long position in the corn market, but yet we had a lower weekly close. That's not a good combination, is it? No, it's not. When, when you've got all kinds of buying and you can't generate any strength in the market from that, that's uh, it's, a, it's a little disturbing for sure. I don't, I don't know why they would continue to hold those long positions or add to them, uh, given the circumstances fundamentally in the market. Yeah, they don't really have um, a big reason to go much longer here. We'll see if they even hold on to what they have. All right, the cattle market, um, we saw a very nice technical close yesterday in that market in both live and feeder cattle futures, trying to extend gains here today. But what do you think about that market? Technically, can we keep going here, especially with the cattle yeah. and feeder report coming? I think you're in that trading range of 184 to maybe 190 on the top side on the on the December cattle contract. We bounced yesterday nicely back up into the middle of that trading range. Um, you know, the, the numbers have been like we've talked for months on end. The numbers are pretty positive. Now imports have been uh, gradually creeping higher, which isn't isn't helpful. But demand's been quite good, quite strong. They're looking for a cattle on feed report. On, we'll be out on Friday. They're looking for um, placements maybe up three or four uh, percent. Marketing's up almost five percent, uh, and and on feed not changed all that much. So uh, there's no, nothing real scary there. And so I, I think I think you still have a chance of retesting that 188 to 190 resistance again. Going beyond that's probably going to be difficult, but we could certainly test it. Well, and we have feeders, the leaders, the cash market seems to be kind of on fire for feeder cattle out in the country, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I mean cash prices are high for the, for the fats. You've got meal making new lows. you got corn at relatively cheap levels. So, yeah, all that's, you know, the feeder market's generally shaped by what the, what the input costs are going to be. And when those are down or as weak as they are, it's, that certainly uh, incentivize people to put some cattle on feed and buy some feeders. You bet.
in the hogs. Uh, we are trying to recover a little bit here today um, after a lower day yesterday. So do you think, though, that the top is in in that market? Probably. I, I mean, you got hogs. What I think that $80 level is going to be tough to stay, to stay above on the December uh, contract. Looking at the June contract, it could bounce up toward 100 but I certainly think you'd run into a fair amount of hedging pressure and probably should if you get June hogs up in, up in that level. So I, I don't think the upside is all that great on hogs, um, but probably the downside is not either because demand's been quite good. No doubt. All right. Thanks so much, Tom Fitzmaurice, Summit Commodity Brokerage. That is Markets Now.